Songs are the blood of MLP. They bring an episode to life, help drive a story further, and bury in our minds to the point where we're humming them to ourselves and hoping no one recognizes. We all have our favorites, but what are some bigger reasons for why we like a song, other than because it's catchy? I'm back Vicodin, and let's count down my five favorite MLP songs throughout the years. Number five, Rules of Rarity. One of the most noticeable pieces of a song are its lyrics. Rhyming is essential for a song that will stay in your mind, and while some would point to win a wrap-up as the classic example, Rules of Rarity is one of the best songs when it comes to lyrical quality. Not only are the rhymes completely on point with poly and monosyllabic words, but its ability to convey Rarity's descent into sweat-chopping her dresses saves us both episode time and reminds us of another excellent song, Art of the Dress. Rules of Rarity is not just Art of the Dress 2.0, much in the same way that Canterlot Boutique wasn't just suited for success 2.0. Both episodes dive into the problems behind customer service, but Canterlot Boutique shifts the focus towards a quality versus quantity problem. Instead of Rarity creating six individual dresses, she is making 600 of the same piece. The reprises help drive this point home, each as well written as the main song. Number 4. The Vote Apart from their song in Season 1, the Cutie Mark Crusaders have had a handful of catchy tunes. Bab Seed was close to this spot just because I remember putting it on repeat when One Bad Apple came out. However, if anyone has watched my videos, you know that I like when a song can pull double duty. Like I said before, a song is capable of driving or speeding up a story without kneecapping the pacing. And while this was true for all of the songs in Crusaders of the Lost Mark, the vote is Disney-esque music at its finest. The Crusaders and Diamond Tiara played off of each other so well. Diamond's ego and manipulation playing off of the Crusaders' optimism makes the song right itself, even with a full three minutes, which is longer than most of the fandom's acclaimed songs such as This Day Aria, neither the song or the episode feel rushed because the plot is explained within the song. Along with that, mere seconds of speech sets up Silver Spoon's face turn and propels the rest of the episode into action. There's a reason Amy Keating Rogers is one of the fandom's favorite writers. It's because songs like these require a careful framework to build off of, and Amy delivered. Number 3. This Day Aria I'm pretty sure I'd be burned at the stake if I didn't have this song in the list. What hasn't been said about this day aria that I could mention? Practically nothing. I'm sure other musicians have deconstructed it down to the note, so I won't pretend that I know the intricacies behind it. The song is epic, both in scope and execution. Before a Canterlot wedding, we've never had a song that built upon the tension of an already dark situation. Usually the songs were upbeat and happy, much like the Smile Song or Art of the Dress. But while we knew that the good guys were going to win in the end, it's the journey that excited us. This day aria is designed from the bottom up to build upon Cadence's imposter. Chrysalis's singing voice and deceptive Cadence, and real Cadence using authentic Cadence, is one of the many building blocks to tying together this theme. With Britt McKelp's voice moving back and forth between evil monologuing and ambition tainted by fear, the listener might even forget that one person is singing two parts. Coupled with the orchestra and animation which sped up along with the song, this day aria is one of a kind, and I'm not surprised if it's at the top of other people's lists. Number 2. A True True Friend Magical Mystery Cure holds a special place in my heart. I struggled with picking which would be my favorite out of this episode, but True True Friend sticks out as the most impressive of the bunch. Find a way in Celestia's Ballad are beautiful pieces that probably belong on the radio, but you could take them out and not miss much. I don't count Behold Princess Twilight as a song with any actual depth, so that's out. Finally, what my cutie mark is telling me is the close runner-up, but I don't want to flood the list with more than one song per episode. Plus, I'd argue that it's not as dense as my choice. What's so beautiful about True True Friend is how it exemplifies the show from top to bottom. We could look at the song as a simple plot device, with each verse allowing Twilight to solve her friend's cutie marks, but if we go further, we can see each solved problem as a smaller version of the show's structure, with each lesson the characters have learned since the pilot flashing before their eyes as their problem is fixed. And if we want to go even deeper, we could summarize this song as the epitome of the show's existence and morals. The main six are true friends and they help each other, through the thick and thin. Their friendships are integral to Equestria's survival and their own sanity, which has been recently hinted to with the cutie remark. This song is aged well with time, much like this day Arya and at the gala. As MLP's lore has confirmed over and over that Equestria is reliant upon the main six friendships, True True Friend has remained as an apt anthem for the show. Friendship is magic has and will always be about solving problems among friends, and promoting friendship to the point where everyone feels like a true friend to each other. At least until they bring in Fallout Equestria in Season 10. Number 1. The Smile Song Yes, I'm completely biased, sue me. 
The Smile Song is a perfect example of how you can make an excellent filler song. True, there is nothing that you learned from the Smile Song that you didn't already know. Matter of fact, you learn more from the dialogue before the song in A Friend Indeed about Pinky's character than the actual song. Yet, it's one of the best songs that the show has ever created. Why is that? Well, the answer is simple. It's fun. The Smile Song is a subversion of all the reasons that I previously gave for why I rated the numbers 2 through 5 songs. Your favorite song doesn't need to have a continuity within previous stories or multiple layers within the lyrics, although Amy's unedited version of the song is neat to hear. All it needs to do is burrow into your brain and make you love it. We all have these songs. When a Wrap Up is probably the biggest example for old and new fans alike. It's catchy, it's fun to sing, and listening only once doesn't feel like enough. This is Pinky's song. Even those who don't rate her as highly as a character either because of her overbearing, energetic personality or her non-sequitur dialogue can empathize with their overall life goal, wanting to make others smile. Much like Art of the Dress for Rarity or At the Gala for the Main Six, sometimes being simplistic and bringing your characters back to the basics helps you create their national anthem. While it doesn't have the complexity of this day aria or the lyrical quality of Rules of Rarity, the Smile Song is one that I can and will never skip on my Spotify. What do you guys think? Are there more intricate or interesting songs that I missed out on? Are there some songs that have gotten better or worse with age? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for letting me gush about my favorite songs, and I'll see you guys later. A bag of I Kidding Out.